Never have I ever and Ginny and Georgia, both recent Netflix shows, include a teen climbing into a girl's bedroom window. It's a trope that's occurred in film since the 1930s. Think of Romeo serenading Juliet up on her balcony and after marriage climbing up to her window. Entering through someone's bedroom window is a common scenario that crops up in popular film and TV shows across the decades. In this video, I want to discuss how the trope can model problematic myths about romance, consent, and gender. Countless artworks display men climbing up to women in windows. Window courting shows up in a lot of Taylor Swift lyrics, linking the act as part of teenage romance. In German, there's a word for the practice of climbing through the window as part of romantic courtship. Most viewers would understand that climbing through someone's bedroom window is fantastical and not try to climb up a window themselves. But they may internalize other problematic messages that come from the regular depiction of what is objectively quite an extreme way to visit someone. As social theorist Bell Hooks argues, cinema assumes a pedagogical role in the lives of many people. It may not be the intent of a filmmaker to teach audiences anything, but that does not mean the lessons are not learned. The trope isn't inherently bad. Even in problematic examples of the scene, the moment can still be exciting, visually appealing, and can establish character. It can give people, typically teenagers, at odds with parents or society, a way to escape in and out of the bedroom and the home. But while these can be positive, it's important to be continually skeptical of the way media can influence our perspectives. To be clear, I still enjoy a lot of the media I discuss, despite the critiques I'll put forward. The first problem with the trope is that it often frames unexpected invasions of personal space as harmless. It is very rare for the guy to give a warning to the girl inside the window. Thus, the threat of voyeurism underlies the trope. In cases when this creepy implication isn't simply ignored, it is dealt with tokenistically by the climber knocking on the window, even though they can see into the room. While the climbing through the window trope doesn't often catch the girl in compromising positions, this is always an underlying possibility when the guy is invading her personal space. This lends to a wider media trope in which unconsensual viewing is displayed as harmless, as analysed and critiqued in Pop Culture Detective's video essay. I want to note that gender-flipped or same-sex examples of the trope mostly have the same issues. Entering someone's bedroom without forewarning and consent is always crossing a boundary. The person in the bedroom is often briefly scared or thrown. The trope often presents this as an acceptable or even necessary part of the romantic surprise. Sometimes the scriptwriters provide a reason for the lack of forewarning, like phones don't exist. Even then, there's often no need for the guy to court her at her house or climb up the window without checking. The trope often presents the lack of forewarning as an acceptable or even necessary part of the romantic surprise. The viewer and the character are meant to be surprised by the climber's arrival, adding excitement and tension to the moment that might not be present if you just went to the door like a normal person. In these scenes, obsession, unpredictability, and instability are shown as dramatic, romantic, and exciting. In many of the sorts of scenes I'm talking about, you hear creepy music as the inhabitant hears a noise outside. The eerie music ends when they see someone they know and trust at their window. But beginning with creepy music is a hypocritical acknowledgement from the writers of how scary this action is. They want all the tension and suspense that comes from such an intrusive and audacious action without the consequences, such as the character being seen as a creep. Stalking is often implied to find out where the girl lives. The dialogue rarely offers the reason for how the guy knows the girl's address. This hidden effort is rarely acknowledged as stalking, or if it is recognised, it's considered a harmless, endearing part of romantic courtship. Another subset the trope plays on is having the girl's ex turn up at her house. The girl may be initially annoyed, but the ex's attempts to win her back are often shown to be successful. Unlike Hollywood wants you to believe, stalking is not often done by strangers. Instead, 75-80% to 80 of stalking cases emerge from pre-existing relationships, and half of all stalking cases develop during the aftermath of failed romantic relationships. Further, stalking is disproportionately perpetuated by men. Another problem with the trope is that it normalises and romanticises the invasion of boundaries. Though the women in the window will often be annoyed, this annoyance is brief. This adds to the worrying myth in Hollywood that a woman's anger or annoyance is not indicative of her true feelings. 
This suggests women's boundary setting isn't real and is instead an invitation for the guy to keep trying to pursue her. For example, in the show Stranger Things, Steve and Nancy are dating. Nancy is visibly annoyed at Steve's arrival. What are you doing here? I told you on the phone I'm under house arrest now. I figured we'd just study here. No. No way. Oh, come on. I can't have you failing this test. Despite Nancy's multiple requests for Steve to leave, he climbs into her bedroom anyway. In the show, Nancy is portrayed as secretly wanting Steve to stay, but this is a dangerous thing to represent. It can be dangerous not to take how women act or behave at face value. Another egregious example of boundary pushing is in the recent adaption of West Side Story. Are you crazy, you can What are you doing spooking around Comuna Rata? Come down. Meet me on the corner. No, go so we stay on the river. Let's meet on the, uh... No, tú no puedes estar aquí. What's that mean? It means go away. Can I come up? No. Maria's annoyance and expression of her boundaries is seen as part of a game of courtship. Later in the film, after he kills Maria's brother, Tony enters her window to tell Maria he's handing himself in to the police. While initially angry and upset, Maria ultimately asks him to stay with her. In the trope, we see men forgiven for egregious acts, stalking, invasion of privacy, and ignoring boundaries. We see women forgiven as well, but predominantly, men make up most of the trope. But these individuals are not meant to be read as bad people, unless they are written as a straight up bad person. I usually just scare criminals. You haven't been naughty, have you? Writers seem to suggest that if the character entering the window is a canonically good person who has romantic intent, then the act is harmless and touching. But there's a blurred line here about what makes a character a good person. You would think we could distinguish a good character from a bad one based on their actions. Instead, we only seem to be able to tell if the character's a good person, based on how they're framed. Good evening, Miss Lane. I'm sorry, did you have plans this evening? In horror films, the act is seen as horrifying because the climate is written as intrinsically bad, or a lesbian vampire in the 70s film. But in romance, the act, even when done by a paranormal creature, is shown as romantic. Mind if I come in? Even when the trope appears in slasher films, the event is intended to jump scare the audience, not be a bad action by itself. It's also important to note here that dating someone doesn't mean you can climb into their bedroom without forewarning. It's just me. Billy, what the, what are you doing here? If the guy isn't rewarded for his gesture, the act of climbing through the window is still regarded as harmless. Some films have satirized the trope. However, most of these films don't critique the non-consensual aspect of visiting a window unannounced. Even in satire, the climber is still often forgiven for their act. There is also an element of coercion in the trope. It is much harder to turn someone away or reject them once they're at your window. While the girl can assert herself and say no, the girl is often powerless to stop the guy without endangering his life. This is sometimes explicitly spelled out by the guy, or heavily implied. And reminding you, you should still be into me. You are so full of yourself. (laughs) Come on, I could have broken my neck climbing up here. This type of coercion is framed as romantic and endearing, even in scenes where the girl gets angry. I do not want to see you. No, no, please, please, Princess, give me a chance. Just leave me alone. It's often suggested she just hasn't been won over yet. In the end, the guy is rewarded, so the romantic gesture is not seen as a problematic invasion of boundaries. The same is true in a gender-flipped or same-sex example. Here, coercions do exist, as the setup inherently makes it difficult for the inhabitant to reject the person coming inside. Sometimes the trope is just friends visiting each other via a window. It is a convenient way to show friends having access to each other's lives 24-7. But friendship should have boundaries as well, and in general, there's not enough healthy boundary setting depicted in friendships and media. Styles, what the hell are you doing? How do we fix the climbing through the window trope? Throwing pebbles is often a better form of a warning, as it gives a person inside some notice before the character climbs up, or the option for the inhabitant to climb down. But of course, throwing pebbles can still be frightening. By not looking into the window, this does give the inhabitant some privacy. But it's still a boundary cross to turn up at someone's house uninvited to make a grand romantic gesture. Depending on the context, it might be okay in a private and safe space to humbly ask for a second chance and give the woman the space to say no. But don't blast music outside her window. 
Unlike movies would have you believe, scenes that display forewarning and enthusiastic consent can be exciting and romantic. Texting or calling can be great if the climber asks permission to come through the window later. But instead, the guy is often vague over technology and just comes to the window. In that 70s show, Eric knows Donna's coming and the anticipation builds tension. This planning leads to a sweet moment when she arrives because enthusiastic consent matters. If you're interested in my sources, check out my reference list in the bio. If you want lists of all the films I've included in this video essay, as well as adjacent tropes that ended up on the cutting room floor, check out my letterbox. Thank you so much for watching.